In the previous video, I said there was something fun to do with the info tool. So if you haven't watched the previous video, go ahead and do that first. But what I want to do is I want to take some photos of magnets and put them over here onto this painting. Well, the problem is if you were to just kind of drag it over and set it to the overlay blending mode, even if you get it the right size, it just doesn't really blend in. It kind of brightens the whole image. And that's because of the way the overlay blending mode works. What we actually want is it to be 50% gray in the middle. Because when you have an overlay blending mode, the light areas are visible, the dark areas are visible, but 50% gray disappears. And in this case, I really only want the dark stuff and the light stuff, and I just don't want this fridge background. So what I need to do is to make this 50% gray. You can see here with the eyedropper tool or with the color picker, right now it's very bright, almost 90% and I want it at 50%. Well, as you might have guessed, this is an awesome opportunity to use a couple of these color sampler dots. And I'm gonna set each of them to the HSB, just like before. And we can see here, each of these are at 88, 87, too bright. Well, now when I make some adjustment layers here, I've clipped a curves adjustment layer to it, and I modify the image. I can watch what these brightness levels are reading. My goal is to get them down to 50%. And you can see I can do it with a lot of precision. So there we go. Perfect, okay, 50%. What I have then is a 50% gray background and then darker areas and lighter areas. So let's take a look and see if this works. I'm going to move this into position and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Actually, I'll flip it horizontal so we get a little bit of perspective. Okay. Now I'll set it to the overlay blending mode. And look at that. That is much better. It's not perfect, but if I apply a mask to the photo, and then I'm just going to paint in the mask a little bit here with this airbrush, you can see I'm quickly hiding that border. But most of that background just disappears. And that's because I was able to make the background of that original photo 50% gray. So let me show you one more time back to the normal blending mode. This is what the photo looks like. And yet you can't see that background at all because of the overlay blending mode. So this is very, very useful. You have a goal in mind, which is, okay, I want to have this background area be 50% gray. If all you had was the eyedropper tool, you could tell one moment at a time what is the value? You could say, okay, is it ah, too high, 85%. But you have to keep going back and forth and checking over and over and over. With the color sampler tool, I'm able to put down these specific positions. And then as I make my changes here, I'm able to just watch what happens. So it's very precise. It's not guess and check. It's a very tight feedback loop. And maybe I actually wanted to have more contrast but to also still have 50% background. Well, I could still do that. So I'm increasing the contrast, but I'm still gonna do it in such a way that I end up with these B levels at five zero instead of five three. Here we go, pretty close. So there I have more contrast, but also still a background that's gonna disappear. And really it's only possible because of these color sampler tools. So the final thing I'd like to mention is that 50% gray and overlay layers is something I find myself doing all the time. So while I don't always put down specific color samplers for each photo, what I do like to do is just throw one up in the corner of my image, put one up there, number one, change it to HSB, and then anytime I have some chunk of a photo, we'll use this one as an example here, so we bring this over. What I wanna do then is say, okay, I want the background area to be 50%. I just know that this little corner of my image is temporarily the color sampling area. So I'd kind of shift it, the photo into the right position, hide the other one here, and then the one is always set to brightness and I can just get a quick check. So I say, okay, it's a little too bright. Um, you know, maybe I'll do whatever adjustment I want to do to it. Okay, 50% looks good. And then I'll just put the photo wherever I want it. So really all I'm doing is I'm just designating a corner of my image to always be the spot where I check to see what is the value. 
In my case, I'm generally looking for a 50%, but you might be looking for a 0% or a 100. But either way, it's kind of out of the way. I can just shift something over to that spot and just get a quick check. And then once I have done my check, I move it somewhere else and I'm good to go. So I don't have the on-screen clutter of the little crosshairs, but I also have just a spot in my image that at any point I can go to and compare. And it'll tell me what it looks like. Now I gotta tell you, I didn't always paint this way. It felt too precise or too stuffy or stiff, but there's really something to this. So I encourage you to give it a try. Maybe it's not for you now, but just know that these tools are out there and they might change the way you paint.